Well, I think I think we got some contact you know, the the and um, the a little bit because uh, it's, it's an opportunity, really. I, I don't think that anybody's doing that to the with any expectation of I have four different office buildings. I have four different people. Right? 
if I happen to forget my keyboard, I have to go stand in the queue to talk to somebody to call out to the store to make sure that I work there. I mean, I have a smartphone. Like, it should be a little bit better than that. So I think there's, I think there's a great opportunity for owners that are more progressive on this point to provide a level of differentiation because you can't pick a building up and move it. So if you're going to differentiate how you're going to differentiate, you could definitely get reduced prices, right? Um, but it might be an opportunity for really advanced students to have a very different experience. So I just wanted to point you down for something like that. And then as far as uh, your question, I mean, if I'm an owner, what do I care about? I mean, I care about the same. But it's interesting to think about 80,000 people. Of those 80,000 people, do you know who the decision influencers are? Do you know who the decision makers are? Do you have the ability to reach them across all the different channels that they potentially could be reached through social media, marketing, via email, text? I mean, to me, that would be a very fundamental system to have in place, and I don't think it's very I don't think it's MRI. You know, it needs to be something that we want to rest in. So I would certainly suggest that that's a technology that I would be looking at for you. If I didn't have that, I would be looking at the kind of Yeah, I mean, we often use the term efficiency interchangeable with the term of the person who's sitting on the side of the window. So we need to kind of back into the office because it doesn't take the same kind of stuff. What technology is actually bringing you back to the office? Yeah, I think, you know, we talked a little bit about safety, right? I think that people face it honestly, and I think some people are going to be able to get the same thing for the number of the best friends that you want Then I might have to be and then I'm like, it's not possible to get out of it because I'm not safe. And I think, you know, we talked about how to get out of it, and that is so much to do with it. And it's okay. But I think, you know, like I'm saying earlier, I have to be conscious of it. So I think that it's like, you know, 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 I think that it's like, it's just able to decide what the right thing is and like how to spend the time to have to do something to be able to have the right thing to offer. And then also, the time to do that, 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 the time Just to build on that, we're finding that the data has been critical. 
for our tenants and, and we need to kind of provide data as an entity, basically, as part of our agency for us to provide insights to tenants about their employees' habits and then push that data down to the employees because they were finding them offline. We've done some surveys. They ask all their employees if they want to come back. They all said no, and they don't really know what to do, and they don't really have good data to make decisions. All the data is based on kind of post COVID.
and spend time with other things together. So I think, I think it's really a fascinating time to be able to operate in it. But I do think there's going to be, you know, there are going to be some big winners and some big losers in terms of how these issues are going to be thought about and addressed. What role is tech playing in helping clients in the United States and in the United States? Anything specific? Uh, yeah, obviously there's the questionnaire, some of that stuff that the people know or get a sense that it's safe. I think the other is that you can just get the numbers on the other side. You know, To me, a great source of things. How are you utilizing the data for A lot of data, right? A lot of different things. Um, remotable, 
it's one thing to get a doctor when you like in math post and you know sit in front of people and post training. It's another thing to be a mental doctor because the user base that you're trying to help and create the game for a doctor. And you also think in the way you're going to test them, you're going to extract a lot of lessons from them about what they really work for you and what they're going to about. How is this going to be a problem? How do you solve it? Or is it too far? But practical, real application can be very different. And then, from my perspective, it's really good to draw your attention to it. And that's the problem with this kind of thing. The user base is successful, but you can build up it, which I think is really important. And then, how do you make it fun? 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 We will have a video conversation and it will be even better. It is funky. It is very successful. But Zoom was fair enough from a lot of the podcasts and some of these things that I looked at for. It was easier. It was fun. So I had no problem making that script for the organization. I was happy that I did it and it was fun because it was fun to get in the queue for Zoom and it was really fun to make fun. So it's just being adaptable and thinking about that was really helpful for my perspective. Yeah, it's really hard right now because it's such an industry so frenetic and it's very easy in this game to end up being twice the same thing. Um, so I guess if I want to talk to you about it, I don't have to talk to you about it, but I don't know. Oh, you know, advising it that having the thoughts and results is great. So I don't know if you want to go down the route of doing it yourself, I think the best piece of advice I can offer is not just understanding the Features and capabilities of the product that you can have today, but understanding the benefits that get close to it. Because it's very, very easy to just kind of say to the name and say, this is just talking, so we can work on the data optimization and talking about the data to the resurrections to the community. It's just easy to know. Anybody that's been in the nation with the open So, one more question. Another question here. What is the next big thing in terms of experience technology? Um, I think there's a lot of really exciting things happening in the software industry. I'm going to take a step back and I mean, part of the way you can comment, but I think we're going to see a once in a generation transition in the marketplace. So, I think many, many companies that are going to be able to find them to create some kind of and then others are going to have to rewind, encourage the lack of experience, and make some kind of space. I think it would be funny in a very digital way to meet the expectations for today's client consumer. So we're going to see continued investment in these spaces. The one thing that sticks out to me is how highly fragmented the ecosystem is. And I don't know that uh, you can properly scale when the ecosystem is as fragmented as it is. I think you will, I, I hope, and I think that you will see um, standards through potential alliances and a break down some of the water quality. So that like you can see, um, you know, true development from a software perspective built on top of these standards to really put into you know, interact with one building and, and have a more seamless digital customer experience, like we have in the consumer sector. 
in the really gorgeous like, sunset class for the last class. But I'm, I'm super excited to see how that comes together. So it's been a sport that we've been using on the city for my perspective. Yeah, I, I completely agree with them. I, I think one of the big things is going to be really rethinking the opposite of the business of the developers. And that, you know, if he doesn't have all the like, landlords, like us, he's a big developer, he's basically just being part of the market network. So not too well that, you know, flex based aggregators or other solutions, but have all our tenants get, you know, all of the other developers profile, you know, kind of support the city of teams. Similar to Corey and Patrick, I think um, we're already seeing it happening, happening in consolidation, people moving away from point solutions, so just a more integrated human experience. I think in school, when I can get people back into the office, but we think that we'll have to see the actual groups um, go through teams because that would be what they've done for any years. One thing we're excited to say about it is hearing more from our customers. Commercial real estate has historically been the only in terms of the tax and the But in recent years, we have seen it again. Do you think most of the industries have a new technology and many years now have been able to scale up? Yeah. 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 People are still in my gym. I think one of the things that we see is that there's not a lot of people who haven't had so much access to time to adopt technology and implement technology and value technology. And that's what the vision is happening. I think that's how we've come into it. And we've told him, oh, we're going to see that. I think all these tools just say, hey, we're never going to be able to do more. So I think that's a lot of progress. 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 I mean, I can only answer this question from the perspective of the one of the industry working, which is in the same time for 20 years, I'm afraid of real estate, so it's special like we have to issue a kind of an area to be reasonable and work in the books and then we put in the terminal, the latest terminals that are already done and then we're going to be able to work with the area and then I think my baby point is either transition to careers and even I 
the people to the 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 people the 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 the
ก็ต้องมาทำให้เรียกว่าเป็นผลงานที่มีความดีที่สุดที่จะเรียกว่าเป็นการแสดงความสุขได้ไอเดียเราทำเป็นสมรรถนะในระดับสุดๆในสังคมที่มีความสุขมากในยุคนี้ฉันจะเอ้ยใจจะทำมาต่อไปในไลฟ์ต่อไปในเฟซจะทำยังไงวันนี้ก็ต้องมีที่อาบวันนี้สุดๆไปแต่ฉันจะมาทำเป็นคนที่มีความสุขก็ยังดีใจมากเลยเราไม่ว่าจะเป็นคนที่จะมาดูแลมันเลยคือการที่เราจะเอาไปใช้ในชีวิตที่เราต้องการเป็นความสุขที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้องการในชีวิตที่เราต้I was at a concert. I was at a concert. That was in the city of Los Angeles, and it was a very creative group of kids. Most of them were just some of the kids, and it was just the teachers that were something outside. But the other thing I loved about the job that I did, you know, was that it keeps the connection going with the artists and the music. Classes together, so we learn how to create and store each other. And it just keeps that stuff feeling like a whole new thing. It's like we're doing this with our kids, and it's very fun. And then there's new kids for the year, so I'm going to have to reach out to my friend, and I'm, you know, still engaging with my colleagues on the trivia. And it's really fun, you know, I'm just going to be able to do this as a community, and we have to trust it. So it's a good way to get to the future of the kids. Right, you have a question from Jonathan. Asking, uh, what are the downstream repercussions of CPAs agreeing to the request of their workforce and allowing work from home to go on and work? Um, don't be scared. <laughs> I mean, I love to see something. You know, that is the demands of motherhood, and people are always supposed to hear that I'm not just a permit, even though maybe I'm not supposed to say that. You do want to go to the office. I'm a kid by myself every single day. Like, it's lonely. I'm crazy. We have social interaction. I want to bring stuff to people. We're looking to move and be back to being a human. It's easy to have to stick by that. I think we need to embrace that. Thank you. 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 Like the flexibility of working from home is fully remote. And I think we're talking about the fact that the staff are taking the flexibility of working from home. I don't know how the state would be. You know, it's not as if I'm going to be focused on this sort of reason for me to be in the office. And then I'd be like coming in to my brain, but I think it's definitely been fully remote and in servicing that model. And I think from the landlord's perspective, obviously, it's something to be done with the personal labor thing. But I also think. Receiving the great resignation or the great reshuffling at all, but getting fully remote is like it's not worth it. Tackle up enough. I know that there is once my job can be fully remote and can be fully outsourced. So I think there is a path there where there's going to be no return, and we're going to see a major shift in in where people are located. Not just in that space, but actually on the street. So, last one. Craig, do you want to say something? So I agree with everything you said. So I wanted to speak with us for a very important moment. I mean, as you know, if, if I were a CEO and a value plan, I would be thinking about providing flexibility because I think you know, I expect flexibility. Uh, and we expect flexibility even more as markets were pretty potentially significant. So you know, finding the, I guess, efficient points here and you know, providing that type of flexibility to them and them. You may know, have other options in terms of places that they could go. It is probably a strategic investment for people. I think the most pain repercussion for an asset class is going to be, and you can make the case that it's going to happen, but I think the data will prove out that it's going to be a little bit of a little space to learn for an office. And then, uh, I think in that process, you will see the assets that really can. As I said earlier, provide a, a differentiated experience. I mean, you can't pick a building up and move. So, 
so location, you can think about location, and uh, I think different state markets are going to benefit from a high rate, you know, more of a high rate remote um, place. Um, corporates and industry and so you just being close to the world or the um, state of the But um, if you can't pick a building up and move it, then um, there is a differentiator you can do and you can think about the lot of the experience that it is going to meet the expectations of today's workforce and it's going to be much more digital, much more progressive, and much more famous. That's, I mean, events are important, but it's, I think it's a lot more than that. I think the, you know, the, the difficult integrations need to happen. But I also make another point, which is the remote and hybrid experience. If it is as bad as it will ever be today, it's only going to be bad. So you just think about that. And then we'll give you another thought for you to the nearest natural region, which is that we think that you know, the disproportionate amount of the other workforce during the pandemic by single family homes almost two hours further away from the final metro core. So, you know, there is within Manhattan and the previous review is cool and hip for the last demographic are potentially not cool and hip because they have to take the regional railway and then they have to make their way to that market. So other areas which were not cool prior to the pandemic may be very cool because they're easy to access for that portion of the demographic. So things are shifting pretty fast, pretty quickly, and there's going to be some pretty big, I think, kind of forces of fun as, as we make our way through. Focused on it, which means the yeah, enterprise focused on it, because there's a war for time. 
and rigorous are focused on. Um, so getting into that understanding is really important to you. Um, having a sense of how you are going to be really important to us and to that so that you can begin to really be doing the future. As long as the mirroring has been focusing on pushing that data down to the heavens, so we realized with COVID when we basically took our buildings down and we turned the lights off in the common areas and the air conditioning in the common areas, we locked everything down, the energy consumption only went down 20%. And that's because the tenant spaces were still consuming all the energy. So the Wi Fi networks were still plugged in, the models were still plugged in, there were no people there, but basically they were down to the energy. And the only way we're really going to get our carbon targets is. Unfortunately, all the time we have for a very warm welcome. Uh, excuse me, right over here. Well, it's here. Here, 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 here,